As we speak, uh, more than two million uh, Uyghurs and other Turkic Muslims have been in turn what the experts and now the US government officials have been calling as concentration camps. These camps aim to put Uyghurs through conversion therapy that I believe is um, re human reengineering and programming of a, a prod uh, heritage, uh, ethnic identity that has been in existence uh, as, as, um, as early as 12th, 13th century. And the, the government, uh, the Chinese authorities have been trying to change the headline uh, by calling it um, re-education centers, uh, vocational schools, and recently the chairman of the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Regional Government stated that it is a boarding school. But when you look at the purposes of those um, uh, camps, uh, the current party secretary uh, said, these camps were designed to teach like a school, be managed like the military, and defended like a prison. To conclude my presentation, since I don't need to add all the known facts, I thought I'd show you something new. Just one or two weeks ago, I was anonymously given these fascinating 3D models. And this is really a really new way to present evidence in a place where evidence is almost impossible to get because you can't just pull out your camera and start to photograph these things and then walk away. Uh, to give them to the Western world. This is a minority person in northern Urumqi who was able to visit, uh, just as a visitor, together with a friend who is a police person, what is officially called a vocational training school. It's not, it's not even called a vocational training center. It's just called a vocational training school. And these are typically institutions that we would not have considered to be part of this internment campaign. But apparently, it's been turned into a walled and guarded compound and expanded, and satellite images prove it. Uh, building A is where, according to this eyewitness who visited this, um, where the detainees are asleep, and B is the teaching building. The bus stop sign says Jiao Pei Zhongxian, which is the classic term for a vocational re-education or internment camp in Xinjiang. This is my own screenshot. I, I double-checked the site I was given. And uh, this is a very small image. I apologize. But if you look it up yourself, you can clearly see the red circles in the corners are watchtowers. You see uh, high fencing around every building, which is consistent with the witness account. And you see the long teaching building in red circle, also surrounded by fencing. It's very hard to see on these kind of screens. I apologize for that. but. Um, Better to see it on my Retina MacBook screen. Inside the teaching building, we have the person using this 3D modeling software to recreate what they saw. And I just think this is really stunning. Detainees, in this case all women, behind high metal fencing, the teacher and the blackboard in front. So there's no way somebody can get angry and hit a teacher because they're literally fenced in inside the classroom. You also notice a guard person in front of every classroom and a, uh, a gated iron bar door that additionally locks every classroom just in case somebody could get out. I think this is pretty, pretty shocking. But examples of how China is using its technology inside of China are extraordinarily important, but it's also exporting those forms of technology outside of the country in places like Africa, as well as in Latin America, and others highlighted New Zealand and other places where they're pursuing training. But I want to highlight the example of Africa in particular because China's exporting of surveillance technology to Africa is not only so that the Chinese government itself can spy for their own purposes, but also so that the African governments themselves can spy on their people. So for example, a Chinese SOE was commissioned to build the African Union uh, building. And they actually built microphones into the walls of this building. And then they made it so that between 2012 and 2017, they were getting nightly downloads from the servers inside of the African Union. So they're using the surveillance technology for their own purposes. But then in other instances in Zimbabwe, for example, they were um, 
they exported it to the government, um, and a Chinese SOE uh, had their technology that they gave to the Zimbabwean government. And then, um, actually, not only was the Zim Zimbabwean government spying on its people using this technology, um, but the SOEs were getting that data back inside of China so that they could, as uh, one report put it, use the darker faces from Africa in order to refine their own ability to use the technology. So private Zimbabwean citizens' data is going directly to China.